What is up, hotties? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Spinauer and Theo Ash. Today we are joined once again by the one and only very special Bangle to talk about the secondary players in this year's NFL draft class. But before we get into that, make sure you all are following us on Twitter at Stay Hot Pod on Twitter for exclusive tweets. Very special content. Maybe Matt and I will have a surprise. We said we were going to have a surprise last weekend, and we lied to you, and we apologize. But how are you guys doing today? Bangle, how are you? It's been a while. (laughs) Matt's not sorry. Yeah, I'm good. How are you, man? Great to be here. (laughs) (laughs) They're not holding me hostage. All right. Yeah, we were saying we're going to clip out the part where you just like, hold on, guys, give me a second. <laughs> yeah, that was that was poorly timed. I'll admit. <laughs> Bengal Bengal walks out on on Stay Hot podcast, but ooh, that's you know. good clickbait. <laughs> it is, it is, and it, like you know, you picture in your head, like I mean, just like you know, unplugging, storming off the set or whatever. But no, nah, I just had to get up and do something for like eight seconds. It was very polite. It was. Yeah, I'm doing all right as well. I just dropped a little mock draft that I cooked up this morning, and. You know, are in favor of the, well. the the typical that always makes people that, happy. That always makes people happy. Honestly, it's a bit boring to bemoan as an analyst the reaction to a mock draft because everyone does it at this point because it's always bad and it's always angry and everyone's like, "I'm so I'm so brave for mocking this draft," <laughs> and uh, I am. And yes, I, I'm the subject to much much persecution as always whenever these things drop but uh yeah i'm just looking forward to it what if you don't say persecution for mock draft dude it's not on the same level (laughs) he was acting like he's dragging a cross across (laughs) yeah that cross has um will levis on it because i mocked him before cj stroud and i'm dragging this take through the through the town square this is gonna get you know anything (laughs) This is just going to get people more mad at me now that I'm using this imagery, and really, it's a self fulfilling prophe- prophecy. So I'll just shut up now. <laughs> Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Bengal, I'm, I'm glad you find just as much humor. <laughs> I, sorry, I don't. I, I don't have some story of my hardships <laughs> like Theo. <laughs> I woke Job up, Matt. looked Job at some corners, went to the gym, you'll... came back. Here I am. I'm doing okay. I've had a very regular day <laughs> we do that we we do this and like two lives a week i don't have something interesting happen to me that often so i guess i enjoyed the playing games last night okay thank you matt yes <laughs> anyway let's get into some of these secondary players we're going to start off with the corners um just mostly some of the the really top tier guys that have been getting floated around. And I think we can start off with the guy that was getting most of the most of the cornerback one hype coming into this whole process, which is Devon Witherspoon. And Bangle, I want your thoughts since I kind of already know where Matt and Theo stand on this a little bit. I want your thoughts. On. Do we know if it's Devon or Devin? Has that been confirmed? I've Ooh, heard that's both. a great question. Great question. <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard Devin. I believe I've, it's is Devin. Is it Devin? Yes, I believe so. Okay, because I think of Devin like D E V I N. I agree. I think it's an understandable mistake. Well, there but. is spelled the exact same way Devon A chain in this very draft at running back. True. I don't know, I guess. I always thought of it as Devin, <laughs> but I could be very wrong. I've but. heard Devin on broadcast watching Illinois. I can't confirm if that's true or not. So Yeah. Broadcast frequently gets names wrong. So. Well, I tried to look at the media guide. They don't have it. They don't have. So I don't know. You should just know these things. You should simply <laughs> be able to use your intuitiveness. I have also heard Devon on like when people talk about or Devin, Jesus Christ, uh, Devin Witherspoon when people talk about him. So yes, I think that it is him. But I digress. As far as him as a player. Um, yeah, no, I, I really like him. Obviously I've seen a Devin or Devin. Oh my goodness. I've seen a Denzel Ward comp thrown out there that I I think is pretty good. Except I think Witherspoon is actually a more physical player in run defense. I think that's probably why he's being valued, uh, as CB one to a lot of different people right now. Uh, his 
man skills are really good. I think he's got a decent feel for zone as well. I think the player's very, very good. People are kind of knocking him for being undersized, but he doesn't play small. So no. I don't really no. care. It's, it's kind of the same thing with Bryce Young, I would say, where it's like he's small. He's kind of an outlier in terms of size. It doesn't really bother me because of how good he is on the field. Uh, as far as whether he's CB1 or not, I think it's a conversation of what you're actually looking for. I think Christian Gonzalez is probably the more like lockdown CB1 with the long arms and, um, yeah. you know, the, the super, you know, I would just say lockdown, like island potential. Uh, but I really every, like how every can move around. different receiver, I think, is maybe how to put it. Like he matches up with any body type, whereas Witherspoon might not. There might be some guys that give him trouble because of their size or strength or whatever it is, where Witherspoon or not Witherspoon. <laughs> Names kicking our ass early. Names in this are thing. troublesome. So names far. are hard. It's okay. Words are hard. Whereas with Gonzalez, uh, he kind of has the prototypical size to to match up anywhere. I think is maybe the the distinction between the two. I I kind of like almost comping him. Sort of like you look at him the same way as you look at Bryce Young because his mirror ability really is so crazy. And I've watched some of the other corners in this class, and this isn't a knock on them, but none of them can recognize what's going on as quickly as he can. I mean, yeah, he's a tough physical player, and that helps him a lot in the run game. Uh, But it's also the fact that it seems like the second the ball is going one way or the other, whether it's on the ground or to a different receiver or to his guy, he knows immediately. His reaction time when a guy makes a break is the best in the class. So all that stuff combined has made him really good. I Definitely don't feel great about the size, but he's just so good at staying with his guys. He's so quick at, at moving with the receivers that I, I almost don't care. I was going to say, if you watched him before you knew how big he was, you would have been like, oh, this is just a good player, right? And then you, and then you get the, the, the label of, oh, he's under six feet tall and he's like 180 pounds. And you're like, oh, oh, well, now he's all of a sudden a worse player. I don't know. I, I never thought that was the biggest knock on him. I, I thought the biggest knock was almost like Matt, you said his reaction time is so good. I think it's almost to a fault because he wants he's so eager to make a play. And I, there are a, f- a few times where he does get burnt downfield, I think, because of that. His makeup speed is not great. His long speed is not amazing. And if he lets somebody get behind him a little bit, right. uh, it can definitely kill him. Sometimes he lets people come right up on him um, because he thinks that he's going to be able to like just react so quickly that it's not a big deal and he won't pedal back enough and that can kill him. But that, and yeah, I guess you could say this about any negative, but I really do feel like that's something where he can choose not to do that on certain plays and it's more <laughs> of a, a coachable thing. Than others, so I, I think once he gets, I think once he gets out of that, uh, he'll yeah. be he'll be really great. Bad habit. It'd be interesting to see like a full testing breakdown from him, Bengal. I don't know, like if you have this idea in your head about the caliber of athlete that he is. I tend to think of him as not like the one of these total freaks. Like he's pretty good, but maybe not one of these, you know, elite nine plus RAS 90th percentile and everything. And he didn't test. He did run the 40 at his pro day and he ran in the low 4.4s, which is pretty good. Um, But yeah, I I agree, Matt, that he doesn't have like stunning makeup speed uh, Mm -hmm. to the extent that like, I think someone like Banks maybe does. He's a bit undersized, like we talked about. And I, I think like his biggest problem sometimes is arrogance almost in the way that he plays like against Wisconsin, especially I I felt like he allowed some vertical separation just because he'd be kind of sitting, standing there Mm -hmm. flat footed. And then guys would zoom by him and he would think he'd be able to get his hips, hips around or anticipate it. And he just wasn't quite able to do it. Um, There's a play. He reminds me a little bit of Jalen Ramsey, like a little Jalen Ramsey, because he is so good in run support and he does have some fantastic ball skills and like man coverage ability. But this is something that gets Ramsey in trouble. And there's a play against Chris Olave this year where he gets burned for a touchdown, where it's the same sort of thing where Olave is just eating up all this space and he's not really respecting the deep speed. He's not backpedaling. He's not flipping his hips. And then he does it late and he just gets burned for a touchdown. There's some stuff that I saw with Witherspoon where it was like moments like that, but it's really, I don't think it's 
totally a lack of ability. I don't think he's a bad athlete or anything. He's right. just sometimes good not good it. enough to dig himself out of some of the holes that he puts himself in sometimes. It's really not a lack of ability, though. It's not that there's something he's incapable of doing covering those guys. It's just sometimes his decision making on when he needs to really respect that stuff is poor. And that, to me, feels like it's easier to get him to not make that decision uh, than it might be to fix some other guys like technique or change the way they're doing this or get them to react faster to breaks or things like that. You know, it's interesting. We talk. We, we we talk about like what we want in a corner, Theo. I know you've brought this up, Bengal. I'm curious to hear um, where you stand on this idea that a corner should be just like in his own head, just like a maniac. And so, someone who is a little bit arrogant, like the, the first the first time I watched, I was like right away, I'm like, okay, this dude's crazy, right? <laughs> so so it's like, okay, he's a little bit arrogant. But I kind of like it. <laughs> it. It helps him more than it hurts him. I think that's kind of the thing that everyone always talks to with cornerback. And, you know, we have that expression floating around now, like that dog in him, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that describes Witherspoon pretty well. Everyone talks about how you want your CB1 or even wide receiver one to kind of be like, I know I'm better than you because I have to beat you on every rep. And for a corner, you know, you can't afford to to lock him down for 90% of the game and then, you know, lose him for a play and it's a 60 yard touchdown. That's why corner is probably the toughest position to play in football is because it's just one snap is going to completely kill you. And everybody does get beat. It's just kind of more like who gets beat, you know, less often. It it tends to be the better (laughs) corners in the league, obviously. And I I think that uh, you got to have that attitude to be like, you know what? I know you're not going to be able to beat me because you haven't the entire game. I've locked you up. And those type of guys tend to be really, really good players. Yeah. Except for he's got Apple, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a, he's got a pretty clean sheet this year too. Like his yards per coverage snap allowed is, is very, very good. Like he did not allow, he did not get beat too much. I'll, I'll say that. So I really like him. He's one of the top 10 players in this class to me. I especially like him. Maybe playing in the slot where he could be involved in run fits because he is going to be one of the better corners at that right away, I think, because he is just so tenacious uh, and he, he can change directions pretty well and mirror pretty well. So, you know, he doesn't necessarily need the sideline to help him out. I, I like him in a star role like that, like Jalen Ramsey kind of famously played with the Rams these last couple of years. Um, you know, get him involved. He's, he's OK getting his hands dirty um, and I, I'd be comfortable taking him. I don't know. I guess maybe that's a good question that I will like, where would you guys be comfortable taking him, Or is there a fit that you really like somewhere? I don't know. I mean, like a prospect of this caliber, if you judge it based off like last year, it's like, yeah, I like sauce and Stingley more than him. I think uh, is fair to say. And those guys went at like three and four. So you see him mocked super often to the lions at six. And you're like, man, I don't know if a guy who maybe doesn't have the craziest makeup speed and a guy who's undersized is deserving to go that high. But then you also do have to take into account this isn't a last year's draft class. This isn't, you yeah. know, this is this year's draft class, which I think is particularly not that great. So if the Lions were sitting there at six and they're like, we want to go Witherspoon, I think I could get it. Yeah. I think anywhere in the top, I for the, there's, Really, most of these corners that we're going to, or I guess all the corners we're going to talk about today, I could get behind taking really <laughs> anywhere once you get in terms of like teams that need them. Yeah, I, I would take them pretty much anywhere, like after five. I think that's interesting. But, I don't know if I think all all the cornerbacks. Not all of, four. maybe not all, like, but Porter, I would take. Gonzalez, I would take. Witherspoon, I would take. And then I think Banks would probably be like the next guy in like that top 10 range or not top 10, but like out of the top 10 range. I mean, Denzel right. Ward went in his draft class at number four to Cleveland. If you think Witherspoon is as good of a prospect as Denzel Ward is, which I think you can make an argument, another undersized guy, but 184, yeah. 180 or yeah, 185 pounds. Um, you know, why not take Witherspoon in that same range. What's the difference between taking the corner yeah. at four and taking the corner at six? It just depends who's there and who's right. Who's uh, who's picking. I, I think that 
we we're seeing all these quarterbacks go high. So we, we know that Bryce Young's going to be gone within the first two picks, probably. And Anthony Richardson's expected to go in that top four or five range as well. CJ Stroud somewhere there. Will Levis there. It's like, do you take the top corner over a team looking for a quarterback? Like if you're, if you're Arizona and the corner is probably pretty high on your list of needs, you know, yeah, you'd probably want to trade down and get that player. But if you have to stick and pick, is it the worst thing? Like, are they going to be chat sized if the player works out because they took him at three versus seven with the trade down? I don't know. It's tough to say. Yeah, I also feel like Witherspoon's a pretty safe pick. I think of all these guys, I mean, I, I, I like all of them a pretty good amount, but I, I, th- I have a hard time imagining Witherspoon is not a very good cornerback in the NFL. I think his skills pretty clearly are going to translate. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think that I, I don't think he will be taken above a guy like Anderson. So that probably takes him off like the conversation for number two or three. Uh, but once you get to the Seahawks, even at five, maybe, or six after the, like the lions, I think, I think the lions is a, a very fair landing spot for him at six. And I think the farthest he could fall is probably the lions again at 18. <laughs> I think that's probably <laughs> worst case scenario is like some, the lions kind of bracket, um, his, his range. I re- man, if he fell to 18, that would that would surprise me a decent. It would surprise me as well. Maybe it's even higher than that, but I, yeah. I can't imagine him at nineteen. Like the Lions passing him at eighteen. But anyway. I, th- I think with all the cornerback needy teams, and and maybe the Falcons are still on that list, even with getting Jeff Okuda. Um, but you have. I don't think Seattle would ever take a corner in the top. I, they really even haven't done it in the first round. I think Earl Thomas might be the last DB they took in the first. I, I could they're be pretty, mistaken. They're pretty on that. arrogant about how they are and able it's to develop corn. Yes, I'm not saying <laughs> yeah, it's a bad player. Tariq Woolen, <laughs> but yeah, I they're think, pretty arrogant about that. I think if Arizona moves down with a team like Las Vegas, if the Raiders move up to three for QB, then you could pretty easily see the top defensive players kind of sneaking off the board at that point. So let's say you might see any combination of Will Anderson uh, and Jalen Carter, we can say five, six. And then so the Cardinals would be at seven and your decision would probably come down to at that point, either if they're still on the board, Witherspoon, Gonzalez or Tyree Wilson. And then at that point, would you just take a corner? Or would you draft the edge because you're you're drafting so high? So I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be interesting. But with you, know, you got the commanders that could use a corner. Pittsburgh, obviously. Um, I'd, I'd be shocked to see Witherspoon or Gonzalez make it to the next Lions pick. I, I just think the Steelers would be a team that would definitely take one. And I, I kind of think Deontay Banks goes ahead of Joey Porter is, is really? my kind of feeling on that. I can see I it. I think I agree. What is up, hotties? If you're like us and you love good food, you've got to check out HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. So skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit, guys. I'm making, I make food all the time anyway. HelloFresh just makes it that much easier. I don't have to go to the store to get my chicken or my pork. They just send it to me and then I can just make the recipes. It's, it's just that easy. So I, I love it. And I know Matt and Theo, they're, they're big fans as well. And look, living on a college student's budget can make it feel like you've got to dig in your pockets for quality meals these days with grocery prices rising every day. Now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. Plus, April is Earth Month, and HelloFresh is always committed to a cleaner planet. On average, HelloFresh meals have a 31% lower carbon footprint than the same meals made from supermarket ingredients, not to mention nearly all HelloFresh packaging materials are curbside recyclable in most areas of the United States. So make sure you go on over to HelloFresh.com slash StayHot50 and use the code StayHot50 to get 50% off plus your first box ships for free. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash StayHot50 and use the code StayHot50 to get your first box ship for free at 50% off. Get HelloFresh, America's and Stay Hot's number one meal kit. We, we'll get to Banks and Porter in a little bit. As far as Gonzalez goes, how do you feel about him compared to Witherspoon? Do you prefer Gonzalez? 
I, th- I think it depends what you want their role to be. I mean, Theo makes a great point with the uh, the star role, uh, which is exactly what Brian Branch played at Alabama, which is he's going to be an interesting talking point later. Yeah. Um, but it, it, do I want the the boundary corner for sure, which we know is Christian Gonzalez, I believe, or do yeah. we want the guy that, you know what, he's shown that he can do it, but you might be worried about size limitations. He's not especially small. This is not Clark Phillips, for example, from Utah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like – are you going to play him on the boundary against, you know, it, it, is he going to be an ideal matchup against a Devonte Adams or a DK Metcalf, you know, like some bigger receivers? Uh, I don't know, but I know Gonzalez, I would feel comfortable of all the rookies in this draft. I would feel the most comfortable with him on the outside. It just depends what you want. I would probably prefer that because I think it's a little bit tougher to find, honestly, because there are a lot of really good slots that we just don't hear too much about. Like, Mike Hilton, for example, yeah. is one of the better slots in the entire league, and who knows about him? Kenny Moore, same thing in Indianapolis. Um, and, and Witherspoon could end up on that same track. And I, I think Nickel is more valuable than ever, and it's still being undervalued, I would believe. Like Brian Branch, to me, if we're going to just quick skip to him and then we can work back, <laughs> uh, I think he's probably a top 10 player in the draft for me. And mm-hmm. I know that position, like Nickel, yeah. slot, safety, not super valued right now, but it really should be with all the teams running three wide receiver sets as pretty much base offensive packages. Why wouldn't you value the guy that's going to be on the field in your base package against, you know, maybe the best receiver on the other team with how often these slot guys are being focal points of offenses? I mean, we were talking about yeah. Jackson Smith and Jigba as wide receiver one in this class, and I might be inclined to agree with that. And who's going to cover him? Your slot corner. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm. It's it's and, a tough conversation. I know I didn't give you a real answer, but no, they're I mean, both yeah, valuable in different ways. Jefferson yeah. can kick inside too. Adams can kick inside all the it's time. Like, Cup, yeah, yeah, there's there's no world where people are like, yes, this X he's the X receiver. He lines up isolated outside all the time. Like that that player just doesn't exist. They're always lining up in the slot. Like sometimes, so that's where the yeah. mismatches are because the nickel corners aren't good enough. And that's <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. So you we talk get, about like, the same thing with with. Uh, the Miles Garrett into Davion Clowney situation when Clowney was like, oh my, they always give Garrett the mismatch. mismatch. It's like, yeah, because he's better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you won't do anything with it. He will dominate right. the game. Exactly. So it's the same thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, if guys like Cooper Cup are going to, you know, have a triple crown, well, and the knock on him was like, well, he's not going against anybody. It's like, yeah, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to take advantage until you find a way to stop it. But I do like Gonzalez more. With that being said, I do like Gonzalez more than Witherspoon <laughs> just because a lot of the explosive gains are to be had like on the outside, deep down the field. Those are like kind of where the game breaking things are happening. And he's just the best mover in the class. Yeah. Like he just moves differently than everybody else. He flips his hips and it. T- you just need to see it one time. And you're like, OK, there's just not a lot of NFL guys who are that fluid. It's it's. He is able to change directions and not lose any speed. It's very strange. He can be in bad situations and and recover very quickly. Uh, And he's not in bad situations all that often. I think he has pretty good technique, like mirroring when he is in man coverage. He's uh, like eyes on the hips and recognizing when guys are about to break and and things like that. He he just checks basically all the boxes, really, except for I think that when the ball is in the air, he can be a little bit late recognizing and getting his head Mm -hmm. around and like making a play on the ball there are times where he's like in position he just can't quite find it and a guy makes a catch because he has better ball skills than gonzalez does uh he allowed some yards that way he allowed more yards than what you typically see from a top 10 corner or even some of the other guys in this class i believe Uh, it was the numbers i was looking at um so the production maybe isn't his sheet isn't quite as clean, but man, he he moves just so so silky smooth, and and I think that that's a that's what you need to play corner. It's, it's hard yeah, to it's get like him into a position trait. where he can't pretty easily recover. But I agree about the play recognition stuff. I think that bleeds into his run support as well, which is really bad in my opinion, from what I saw by all accounts. Um, a lot of times, like you watch Witherspoon, you watch him. And this is, again, a pretty minor thing, to be completely honest with you. But uh, his he's not like recognizing and attacking as quickly as possible. And whether or not that's because his play rec is worse or because 
he's just not as feisty going at the run. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but he definitely uh, is a little bit weak in that area. Yeah. But, I don't know. It, G- Gonzalez and Witherspoon, I, I think I really think all three of Gonzalez, Witherspoon, and Porter are like immediate starting corners. I want to talk about Porter of, then. I, well, I think I think those are all immediate starting corners. We've I'm not compared, I'm not the biggest Porter fan in the world. I watched some of him today. What do you uh oh, I I can probably guess what you dislike, but what do you, what do you dislike about Joey Porter? I think I think getting hands on his receiver sometimes is his only plan even when it doesn't make sense. I think way too often like he'll be 10 yards off and he'll just let the receiver come to him and then just try to push him. And yeah. if that doesn't work, the guy is getting behind them and he does not have the recovery speed to make up for it. And don't get me wrong. I like him. Like, yeah, he has the big wingspan. He's real strong and his press technique is nice, but uh, he's penalized a ton and for good reason. And I, I like corners who are a little bit more grabby, but I just felt like sometimes he's grabbing and pushing in the absence of technique. I think Porter does not have great movement skills. Like compared to Witherspoon, compared to Gonzalez, Porter's movement skills are definitely lacking. Um, but I mean, he dominates the line of scrimmage so frequently that I'm just willing to let it be a little bit. So, so to the, it's like it because I'm thinking like if if a quarterback is looking at his his receivers. Right. And he's, he's looking at his first read and his first read has been stuck on the line of scrimmage for a second. He's turning away from him. And at that point, the route's dead. I, yeah, yeah, I I agree. Like the press is legit. I think he's a first rounder. I like him, but I thought that there's just too many plays where it's contact way downfield. And I know like they're just not going to call that on you every time. So it's not the end of the world, but he did get called right. for it a lot, and he could have been called for it more. Right. And also, press coverage does not get called that much in the NFL. It's not like there's That's- many teams that just like <laughs> like line up across the board, ma- like press man, press man, press man, and run it over and over and over and over again. Yeah, if he's not pressing, I'm not that impressed by him. The press coverage is awesome. Yeah. And maybe whatever team drafts him is going to be like, yeah, we're going to run a ton of it or we're going to have him impress a ton. And that'll yeah. negate that somewhat. But he's look, he's putting his hands on you. Whether or not he's lined up in press or 10 yards off, it makes no difference to him. <laughs> yeah, he's got longer arms. If he his thought is if I can get in your frame, there's nothing you can do. And he's right. <laughs> But if he doesn't get like there's um was it Marvin Harrison had a couple of reps against Porter where he was just like he just batted his hands off of him and then at that point he he won the rep. And it's and those like, are always Porter, tough to judge because like it's Marvin. Harrison. It's Marvin Harrison, you know. but but at the same time it's like I do get that like yeah if Porter does if Porter doesn't get his hands on you it's it's kind of game over like you can probably win that rep. I don't know what your thoughts on him are, Bengal. I, I think I'm kind of in stride. Um, I, I just think the one thing is, I mean, we talked about like how fluid and, and smooth Christian Gonzalez is. And we, there's so many big corners in this class. And, I mean, it's rare to find a guy like Gonzalez that moves so well. And Porter is just not one of them. Like, he's got the really long arms. He's got the, like, kind of, you know, the, the long frame in general. And that is going to limit movement ability and his hips are stiff a pretty tight i mean <laughs> yeah that, that's gonna hurt when you're going to you know turn and run i don't know if it's so much about long speed which i agree he doesn't have a ton of um in comparison to you know some of the guys that can really fly in this class um he's just a little tight and grabby yeah I'm, i mean i i think he's good where i'm really kind of harping on the negative here but i i think it's important to be said yeah, he he does not. He has a great play strength. Like if we're gonna get into the po- positives with him, he, it, not only is he long, he is just very strong. There are there are reps yeah. where there will be offensive pass interference that never gets called because it's offensive pass interference. Like with Witherspoon, guys will shoulder him and he'll kind of like fly five yards upfield because he's a smaller guy. 
that won't really happen with Joey Porter Jr. He is he is very, very difficult to like move off of his spot. And if you can't escape him, you can't really rely on that like shoulder to the chest to like knock him way far away and like hope it doesn't get called. He, he just stands right there and he can push. I've seen him push guys yards out of bounds and he has pretty good ball skills. <laughs> yeah. Like he is his for sure. His arms are just so long that like he can reach that extra two inches and, and break up a ball and He's got NFL pedigree too. Like he is going to go in and I'm sure like he knows the deal, right? Like he's been preparing for this kind of his whole life. And I I don't think that you've really got to worry about him so much off the field. Not that you really do with any of these other guys, but you know, it it is something that is like, I think worth noting that like he has, he he knows what he's getting himself into more than about anybody. So I, I like him a decent amount. I have him as my lowest first round grade. He is like just flirting with like his limitations being too much and like giving him a second round grade. But I do still have a first round grade for on him. And I don't have many first round grades in this class. Yeah. You have like what? 15 about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So. I, I think, I think the flaws are there, but you've seen corners be successful with his sort of archetype. So it's not the end of the world. We compared him to Sherman in the past. So yeah, someone who can be like, maybe like even a cover three type of guy like this. Seattle would love him. I'm sure like he's the long, strong corner that they all prioritize. He ran pretty well, like at the combine, he ran in the low 4.5s. It wasn't anything concerning. He he definitely would be someone that like Seattle would totally draft like a couple years ago, or I don't know if they would because they don't yeah. really draft him in the first <laughs> they, round. They might but even he's there. They might even today. Like <laughs> he's in that archetype where he can like run up the sideline. He's he's kind of a boundary only guy. He's not quick enough to keep up in the slot, but like he can crowd yeah. you towards the sideline if if you want to like have him bailing into the deep third and and whatnot. So I don't know. I I like him in the middle of the first. I guess I think that's. I, I wouldn't be mad at it. I love. Porter. I keep. Mo- I keep mocking him to the Steelers just because they are obsessed with stop like, lineage. Stop the. No, the AFC North is obsessed with making my life a living hell. All right. <laughs> the Browns they, do what I don't want them to do, and everyone else does what I what I would want the Browns to do. Yeah, but the Steelers have like both Haywards and they had both Watts and they drafted Pickett. They're like, we searched the world and Pickett was the best one. And he was like, right in our backyard. Imagine that. It's like they love steel, like they love Steelers culture and they love, you know, bringing families yeah. together and, and things like that. And they have a, a glaring need at corner. So, yeah, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. I, I don't have too much more to say about Porter. That's fair. But I think that's a very clear landing mm-hmm. spot. Yeah. Well, you like uh, Deontay Banks. That's that's your guy. You love yeah. Deontay Banks. I think he's pretty special. I mean, he tested really, really well. Really um, well. He's a great. He's got a lot of play strength. There are reps. There's a pretty famous one versus Ohio State where he just has a two handed jam and drives the guy backwards. Like he it completely ruins the rep. He had a great game versus Ohio state in general. And he had a, a great season. Really. He's got, he's a burner. He's got great speed. He's pretty fluid. Uh, and with great results this past season, uh, he missed a year due to injury, but I don't remember what exactly what it was off the top of my head, but it wasn't like an Achilles or like an ACL where I'm real concerned. It was like a shoulder injury. Um, He's got good ball skills. Like he gets his head around at the point. uh, He didn't have much pick production. So it's a little bit controversial to say this, but I think like he handles himself pretty well, like as the ball is arriving and he had some pretty impressive interceptions that someone who is not coordinated enough or like freaks out at the point of attack, like wouldn't make the, the, uh, some of the interceptions that he did have, but like he, he checks the size box. He's big. He's like six feet tall and like 190. I think he's like 200 pounds. He's just really good, man. He's, he's good. He's very good in man coverage. I think he could use a little bit of work, like recognizing zone. Same thing with Gonzalez that we didn't talk about, but I don't know. My ideal defense is just like lining up and playing cover one all the time. So these are the types of guys that I, I really like. Bengal, I know that you, I can't remember if it was before or after, but you 
What do you think about him? Do you think this is valid? Yeah, no, for sure. I actually think he's a little bit better in zone than you may be giving him credit for, at least in in my point of view, which is, you know, rare for a height, weight, speed freak the way Deontay Banks is. Yeah, 200 pounds. Uh, I don't know that he plays like quite as fast as his 40 time. I think there are a few guys in this class like that. Like uh, Rush from South Carolina, Darius Rush is another one who ran really, really well and has some great GPS times at the Senior Bowl. But, you know, I watch him and I go, this guy's getting beat a little bit too often down the field for somebody that's like a burner. Um, But, you know, I I really like Deontay Banks. I think, you know, you do worry about the production a little bit. But then that was a knock on Christian Gonzalez in 2021, and then he – had great production in 2022. I think corners is one of those tough positions. It's kind of where a fluky thing. Like just can some be. year there'll be seven picks and some year there'll be zero. No. I I don't, I'm not too concerned about yeah. it. Yeah. Like is a guy like Emmanuel Forbes better than Deontay Banks because he's, he has the most pick sixes in college football? Yes. I don't know. Like it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome to, to see that, but I'm not sure it's necessarily indicative of a better prospect. You do worry about the shoulder injury, as Theo mentioned with Deontay Banks. Uh, that knocked him out for, I mean, pretty much entirety of 2021. Yeah. Um, I definitely like him. I, I think in a class where you do have a lot of like height, weight, speed, length corners, you know, he is definitely one of the better ones. And uh, he was one of those names that kind of got circulated more and more toward the end of the season as draft season was starting to ramp up uh, as like, oh, you know what? Some teams actually like him in the first or a second round in there. Uh, and he just continues to skyrocket through the off season, uh, and I think he's only done himself, you know, plenty of favors testing off the charts, pretty much. Uh, like his broad and vertical were ridiculous, and he ran in right. the four threes. And I think he's he's pretty good on tape too. So yeah I, yeah, I like him quite a lot. I think the most indicative thing about like, or the most transferable thing from like those testing numbers isn't necessarily the fact that, oh, well, he's really fast, right? Because you're right, Bengal. He, <laughs> that was literally like the first line in my, uh, my like review of him was he tested out of the world, but I don't feel like he played like someone that tested out of this world, but it shows ex- a level of explosiveness and that shows up in his play strength, right? So we, we know that he can get a good start out. But the fact that he jumps well and all this other stuff, that shows up more. It shows up more in the play strength than it does in the actual downfield long speed stuff. He also hasn't played that much football. Like he started this year, but last year he obviously missed a large portion of the season. He only started two games with that shoulder injury. And the year before 2020, he's played in five games. He played a lot of his, I, I want to say his rookie year, probably his freshman year, 2019 and also 2022. And I think that shows up like he can bite on false steps. He can open his hips too early and get like kind of turned around. These are these are things that I noticed. Like his his technique was not always there. He wasn't always as patient as he, as he should have been, and was like too quick to react. And you'll get torched if you do that in the NFL. Uh, and so there might be some rough moments there, but like the idealized version of this guy is a, a pretty special player, and he is someone who, like Gonzalez, is capable of of lining up and and matching up with any kind of corner and any or any kind of receiver. And he did really well like he he may have the potential like oh there's some there's some technique things that he could get burned with in the nfl but it never really happened to him last year in maryland his his numbers were once again like very good in terms of like yards allowed not so much in terms of interceptions but yards per coverage snap was was pretty good for him and that's always i think one of the better stats for corners and he played great versus ohio state that's all you need to know (laughs) <laughs> that yeah. that does speak they didn't get him too bad yeah so i really like him he's he's my corner too actually him and him and witherspoon are very very well him witherspoon and gonzalez i think are all kind of a, a i i think him and witherspoon me. are very similar in terms of style like on field but then like obviously i don't know if i agree with Banks that is better athlete witherspoon has a very, very distinct style that like i have not quite seen much of with his just his sheer tenacity i i don't think banks is quite like that which has been also is, it's not it's not to the same level but i think it's i think it shows up a little bit i don't know they felt a little bit similar to me but those i don't are the know main were there corners. any other those yeah, are the main say, were there any other 
how would we rank them one through four? I I, th- I have like somewhat of an idea, of but for me, it goes Gonzalez, Banks, Witherspoon, then a bit of a gap, and then Porter. Is that where are we all at? Maybe just run through it. I think I have Witherspoon just over Banks. Other than that, I agree with you. It's also worth mentioning that Gonzalez is like way younger than the rest of these guys. They're all 23 and he's like 20. Deontay Banks? Gonzalez is the young one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think he just turned 22. Um, I, I don't know. I think I would probably have Gonzalez one Witherspoon, like one B again. It just kind of depends what you want. Um, I don't know. It, it's pretty tough after that for me because you could make an argument for a lot of these guys. Like, I think this is probably one of the better corner classes I've ever seen. Uh, I really like DJ Turner from Michigan. I think he is really, really good in coverage. He's like, if you take away the unbelievable uh, run defense that that Devin Witherspoon's going to give you, I think that's DJ Turner. He's got the sticky man-to-man skills. I think mm-hmm. he's instinctive. I think his footwork is great. Really like DJ Turner. Uh, Emmanuel Forbes has great instincts in zone. Uh, like, I don't know that I love Joey Porter as much as those guys. Like in that top tier, I think he's probably more in that next group for me. I mean, I really even like Tyreek Stevenson from Miami. Hey, uh, hold on. Now you're talking. <laughs> I, I think if you're going to tell me I can have Joey Porter Jr. at 15 – or Tyreek Stevenson at 40, I would take Tyreek Stevenson every time. And I, 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 that, this could age terribly, but for the draft value, when I don't think they're that far apart, I, I, would, I would probably prefer down the board. It's a That's, really great corner class. That uh, is, Julius Brents in the second, two, third. Whew. You're a Giants fan, and I know we haven't gotten into Branch yet. Unfortunately, safeties, but uh, <laughs> they obviously have a glaring need at corner. Is that like where you find yourself hoping they address the most? Like when you're doing mods? my like kind of hot take is the Giants shouldn't take a receiver this year, and they should take either corner or edge or interior offensive line. You know, it's a little bit like lame or whatever to go center at 25 but you know you seem you've seen teams do that and, and be pretty happy like would the lions go back and take frank Ragnow at 20 if they could again i'm sure they would i'm sure they would mm-hmm. it, you know it, it's easier said than done to draft like an all pro center like that um but yeah I, I think with the abundance of cornerback talent and some real questions about the receiver class i would prefer it corner high in the draft uh, as opposed to a receiver for sure Okay. Yeah. I, I the more I, the more thought I've put into it, Gonzalez and Porter are kind of neck and neck for me, but that's just a it they just do different. It's it's not the same stuff. It's not the same game. I feel like I'm watching, but they're going to be in the same role. Um, and I just think that like Porter's press versus Gonzalez's ability just to be fluid on the outside, those two things, and then Witherspoon would be my next guy after that uh, just because he does get himself <laughs> out of position sometimes um, and he c- can't save himself the way that Gonzalez can um, and then after that I would probably go Banks but of the four yeah of the four of the four This episode of Stay Hot is brought to you by our friends over at Shady Rays. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers world-class products rivaling tons of other brands that I've tried in the past. They have you covered from the sun to the slopes with premium polarized shades, customizable snow goggles, and much more. I'm ditching all my other sunglasses for Shady Rays today because if you lose or break your pair, even on day one, Shady Rays will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. And if for whatever reason, you don't instantly fall in love like I did. Just exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back. But I think my favorite thing about Shady Rays is their emphasis on giving back. To date, they have donated over 20 million meals to fight hunger with Feeding America. So with Shady Rays, you can look good 
and feel good knowing you're helping to make a difference. And now exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the new year. So head on over to ShadyRays.com, use the code STAYHOT for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses and try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. Shady Rays, making an impact together. If you want to get into what we were talking about earlier with Witherspoon, which is nickel guys, and really Nick, one the one like clearly obvious nickel guy, Brian Petrell Clark. Oh. <laughs> yes, obviously, um, and it, and we can talk about like if we wanted to talk about safeties in general, I guess we could throw like Antonio Johnson um, in, in that mix as well, but. I mean, I think Brian Branch is going to be great, just straight up. And it's partly you trust. It's the same thing with Ohio State receivers. You draft Ohio State receivers because you know they're going to be good, right? Obviously, we do our due diligence on JSN. We're gonna we do our due diligence on Brian Branch. But Bama has they have the history of great secondary players, and I don't think Branch breaks that rule. Bangle, where do you lie on that? I'm a really big Brian Branch fan. I, I think what, maybe like 10 or 15 minutes ago, I said I would have him as a top 10 player in the draft. And believe it or not, all the way back then, I would still stand by that right now. Wow. Um, you're I know, so right? consistent. <laughs> no, I really do think Brian Branch is incredible. I mean, we talked about the instincts of Witherspoon earlier. Brian Branch is super instinctive. He just has a nose for the football. Yes. You know, it's a type of thing that I hate to be cliche, but you say you can't teach that. And he is always around the ball. It's one of those guys that I think could play over the top. He looked okay in his limited snaps there. I think just over 100 uh, deep coverage snaps for Brian Branch in his career. But he's someone that is so good around the football that you would like him in that like overhang nickel role where, you know what, if it's going to be you know outside zone, he's going to just shoot and make a play. Um, and if yeah. he has to cover a slot receiver down the field, you're comfortable letting him do that because he moves so well. I- I'm not worried about his testing at all because he, he plays so fast and explosive. I don't think it's going to be a problem, and he's so sticky. I'm a really big Brian Branch fan. I agree with the the quickness and around the line of scrimmage and as a slot corner. Do you think he has the long speed to play over the top consistently in the NFL, or do you think it's more of like a situational thing for him? You know, I think it's one of those things where, like, you know, we can look at the super freak athletes that play over the top, but I think it's the ability to read, you know, I will say a quarterback and a defense as it's happening in front or an offense, excuse me, in front of you on defense, where we can see guys that don't maybe have the absolute top end speed. Look at Marcus Williams, you know, the former Saints safety now in the Ravens. Uh, he was taken in like what the third round out of Utah years back um, Mm -hmm. where he's not super, super fast, but he's one of the best over the top guys in the league. Jesse Bates is kind of in that same boat to me, even though he went a little bit higher. Um, But I don't think you need to be super, super fast to have great range over the top. And I think Brian branch could, you know, fit into that group. Yeah. I mean, I think about even, I don't, I don't, it's like, I'm going to go back to the Browns. The Browns safeties were terrible because all of them have just terrible vision skills. They just you know, like John them. Johnson. John Johnson got burnt. <laughs> <laughs> he, was every, not good. he was getting cooked every game. I love John Johnson. when We first got him. Oh, he and was great on the Rams. Yeah, I was excited. And then he stunk. So, but it was just like, yeah, it's like terrible, terrible vision downfield uh, or from like that high safety spot. No, Brian, Brian branch is so fast. Like watching him, I think about like a quarterback trying to, to throw like an out route and just have knowing that they have to hesitate a little bit because Brian branch could be 10 yards away. And then as soon as you throw it, he's there to make contact and break that pass up. You mentioned Marcus Williams, like another Raven safety comes to mind about him and like the role that he can play in the NFL. And it's Hamilton who like didn't yeah. test yeah. well at all, but he played kind of that overhang star nickel type of role where he spent a lot of time in the slot and barely, he barely played over the top at all. 
And he was very good in that role, like in the slot, blitzing, run support, like cleaning up anything that happened in the flat, and almost a, a dime backer type of role. And that's kind of how uh, Branch was played at Alabama. He played everywhere, like a lot is in kind of a, a pseudo linebacker corner hybrid. He can just do whatever, I think. And I think he's someone that Saban is going to talk about for a long time because he's like, Branch could do it. <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I can like kind of picture Saban saying things like that, like, you know, oh, Branch could play line, but Branch could play safe. He, he lined up everywhere and he was he good did. everywhere. And he, he's very good at anticipating breaks and mirroring guys when he's in off coverage. And he had more tackles for loss than any other Saban defensive back in like the history of his tenure there. Like he, he's just disruptive Jesus. everywhere. So yeah, he's a top 10 player for me as well. And I'd be fine. He's another guy that I, I think would be interesting to talk about like where his range is. Cause I think it's a, big range in this draft but yeah I would be, it, it, I would be it, it does him. depend you know like you mentioned earlier bangle where teams value this kind of idealized slot role right because it and it, i guess it also depends on how versatile teams really think branch is because he doesn't have that many snaps as a single high deep safety. So if a team's like, oh, well, we think he can play there, are they going to be willing to draft him higher? If a team thinks, oh, well, he's just a slot guy, are they going to be lower on him because of that? Or are teams gonna be like, I don't care that he's a slot guy. He's going to be like the best slot guy in the league. We're going we're gonna to roll with that. Yeah, I, I think it probably starts at 14 because you, I, I think I could see New England just yeah. <laughs> really valued. They do have a lot of slot players on their roster, but I, I could still see that happening. Uh, and then I think it probably ends at 25. I, I really, I, I would have a tough time getting him past Jacksonville because their biggest need is probably nickel corner right now. And uh, the Giants, you know, just to get a great versatile DB in there, I would really appreciate Brian Branch, as you guys may have figured out up to this point. Uh, I, I could see him as a Julian Love replacement, honestly. The, you know, the uh, strong safety of the Giants that went to Seattle in free agency. Yeah, I think that um, Branch could certainly play strong safety or move him around, you know. So I, I just I, maybe him. he goes further. I, I didn't think Daxton Hill was going to slip as far as he did. I was a big Daxton right. Hill guy. I still am. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was too. I just mocked him to the Giants and the mock draft I dropped today and dropped today and Gi Giants fans weren't falling yeah, to their knees thanking me. Of course for, they weren't. For <laughs> we want Quentin Johnston for my charity Those ungrateful. Work. <laughs> we want That's JSN. What I'm <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I remember I the first time we did a mock draft. We got I did did Brian Branch go undrafted in the first round the first time we did it. Maybe. I don't know if he's a first round lock. That's kind of my hot take is like kind of a box safety. You didn't test super well. I, I, d I do think like his floor is he's one of those surprising names that don't get drafted in the first round. It gets picked up really early in the second. I, I don't like think Xavier McKinney, happen. maybe. Yeah, I, mm. I, I think that it's possible. But man, if you're like the Eagles, they're at pick 30 and you just lost like CJ Gardner Johnson, like maybe it is impossible. But I don't know. I, his functional range is probably anywhere from like 14 to, to, I would say maybe a little bit lower and say Philly at 30 and maybe. I think that's fair. It's fair. lower than that. Like but. it's not unthinkable that like the giants at 25 could even take like if a, if a real, if one of these high level corners falls, one of these four guys we talked about falls to that area. Like if Porter's there at 25, I'm probably pulling the trigger on Porter. But actually, over Branch, I don't know. I might value Branch over him. But I'll tell you, Joey Porter Jr. would be better in the Giants scheme. It's very press man heavy with Wink Martindale. So I would have a tough time thinking that they would do that. But you never know. Yeah, it would be tough. I don't know. Um, you said you're you're. A, I think it was even before we started recording that you're a big fan of Antonio Johnson. Uh, if you want to give us some thoughts on on him as well. He's just another one in a long line of this guy can play both safety and slot corner this year. Uh, you, I mean, you go to Illinois. I, I really do like Sidney Brown, but um, 
you look at Jertavius Martin, who also falls under those same lines of safety that is so good in the nickel that that's where that guy's probably going to end up playing. I think Antonio Johnson's one of these guys that going into the year, I would have thought would be the first true safety off the board. And I don't know that much has changed with that because I do not count Brian Branch as a safety. Um, I really, really do like Antonio Johnson as, you know, an athletic guy that can play in the slot. Um, and I think he tackles very well. I think Antonio Johnson's probably one of the most underrated names in the draft right now. Uh, and it's tough. He plays a you know less valuable position um, than maybe it should be. Um, and I, I think he's going to be a difference maker. I, you know, I'm not going to say Derwin James because, I, I, you know, you can't compare a versatile guy to the best versatile guy in the league. Uh, but I think, you know, um, I don't know that he's super far from – James as a prospect. I, I don't think they're quite in that same tier, but I think they could potentially um, do similar things. And Johnson's not quite the athlete. And I, yeah. this is really, I'm not trying to compare, you know, it's exactly what I'm doing, but I, I'm not saying he's is any, I'm not saying he's anywhere near that same level, uh, but I think he's, you know, maybe the next tier down, but still able to do a bunch of different things. Well, it's hard to do, comparisons i can't you, compare you him don't to like wanna, you some don't want to compare right. you don't want to compare him to like it's the same thing with like the joey porter uh richard sherman comp i'm like well i feel i feel shitty like putting you on that like pedestal like giving you that expectation to reach now of like well if you're not richard sherman you're a bust but it's like shades of you know like yeah that, that's sh- more of what i'm of you know, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I kind of disagree. I watched Antonio Johnson and he didn't really move me. You see 2021? I'm sorry. No, I watched 2022. There you go. I need to watch 2021. It's a Miles Murphy thing. Yes. Yeah, that is true. Uh, Even a a Will Will Anderson thing. thing. Yeah, we're a Brian Brzee thing. Okay. I'll I'll have to check out his 2021 film then because I watched 2022 and I thought he just didn't quite look like he had the foot speed. Uh, here's, I'm going to, I'm going to make excuses, which is that go for it. Texas Please A&M, do. Texas. And I hate A&M. Uh, hook yes, up. but, but <laughs> that was an absolute dumpster fire uh, team in oh 2022. God, so I, I really, I don't know how much to read into that. Okay. I'll check out 2021. Uh, one safety I did watch. I have not watched that many of these safety classes. I watched, um, Jair Brown, I th- is that how you pronounce his first yeah, name? Yeah. From Penn so. State. Mm-hmm. I liked him a lot. I thought he is clearly... Jack of all trades. Clearly not a great athlete. Someone who, you know, is a bit slow and is a little stiff and, and not someone who is really twitchy. But man, he, he just fills the alley with such vigor. And he is... He's someone who led Penn State in solo tackles like two years in a row. Uh, had a bunch of interceptions like very very productive clearly very smart there'd be times where he would like very clearly know what the play is before it happened he'd be like see them motion or or getting some distinct formation and as soon as the ball is snapped he's just flying downhill because he knows exactly where the ball is going to be he's someone that like i don't know if he is going to be a starter because of the athletic athletic limitations but but he looks like a just a pretty damn good like football player and a very smart guy. He's probably like as far as pure safeties go, and I have not watched nearly enough. And I'll spend you know the next couple of weeks looking at him. But have you watched one Jail like Skinner most. from Boise? I have watched him in the sense that he I've seen people play Boise State, and he's stood out to me. But I have not watched him directly yet. I've watched Sidney Brown, and I also didn't love Sidney Brown. But yeah, yeah. Jail Skinner, if not for I think he tore his pec. He would be also very yeah. much in the safety one conversation. I think it's okay. like an underrated safety class for sure. And like safety is one of those positions that's tough. That's tough because like you're not always going to notice them when they're doing everything right. So mm-hmm. it, yeah. you know, it, it's that that I would say is the position that is most likely to go under the radar. Um, like because even a nose tackle, you're like, you're going to notice when they're holding up blocks or you know, shedding or maybe they look explosive on a stunt or a twist or something, but like the safeties are maybe being 
perfect in everything. They're reading everything well. They're covering their deep half or third or shading, whatever they're doing. Um, but they might not get the shine because you only notice them when they screw up, kind of like a tackle at times. Yeah. I always well, think of, also- a, of a Pete Carroll quote about Earl Thomas, and they were asking him about like how you quantify his success. And he said, when was the last time you saw someone throw a post route against us? And it's things like that. It's like what doesn't happen or sometimes what doesn't even get run. Like they're not even trying in this to test him in this area or like it's, right. it's very difficult. It's very difficult for them to make like a big impact on a box score, especially if they're playing, you know, free safety or what you'd think of as like a, a free safety as a right. single high or something. That's like the that. thing is like in order for a safety in college to get, or even a safety in general to get a lot of recognition, they either have to jump out on the box score or have a good PFF grade or have a good PFF, <laughs> grade, <laughs> which is, <laughs> but it's like, I mean, if you're just watching, if you just spent like all day watching college football, you still probably wouldn't know who most of the safeties the are because they're not yeah. on the screen. <laughs> like yeah. the only reason Matt and I got the chance to like, you know, watching Ohio State football, we watched Malik Hooker ball out back in the day. Because he had like 12 Because he had like, he had, Let me he tell had you like, something, he had like three I, pick sixes. I know about Ohio State's current safeties. They are on the screen far too much. So <laughs> not, a, not a big Ronnie Hickman guy? Not a big Ronnie Hickman guy. A lot of people like him. Really? Dude, go back and watch the Michigan game, man. <laughs> it's the only one that matters. Anyone else that, that stands out to you or that you want to talk about, Bengal? I think we're. I like Jamie Robinson. Yeah. Chris I do Smith too. is good. I do like Jamie Robinson. I don't know. I don't really have too much to say because, you know, we've been belaboring the point. I feel like a lot of these prospects kind of start to bleed together a little bit uh, at this point. Like, I can only say, oh, Jamie Robinson, you know, he's undersized, uh, he's instinctive. And, like, uh, there, are, there are a lot of those guys in this class. Didn't even mention, like, uh, Travis Hodges Tomlinson, Tomlinson, another yeah. nickel who's pretty good, but <laughs> real small. I don't know. It, it's a really fun DB class. I think we're going to end up seeing some like true stars, uh, down the line. It'll be, it'll be interesting, but I, I think the real like unsung thing is going to be just how many of these guys end up having long-term roles in the league and, and don't wash out. I think there are a lot of those guys who are just going to be solid contributors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's fair. We're not going to get, there's no, not going to be a sauce that doesn't allow any touchdowns, but I think the, the guy that looks like he could have the highest chance of doing something like that would probably be uh, Julius Brents to me, just because the guy is continuing to get better. Uh, had a really good senior bowl as well, has mm-hmm. a ridiculous frame, but moves pretty well and is going to likely end up in a better situation because of his draft position, in my opinion. So I, I, I think that, you know, are we going to see a bona fide, okay, corner gets drafted, he's the best in the league instantly, pretty much like, you know, a lot of people are pointing to with Sauce, for example. That, that's like such an outlier. Yeah. Of course not. But right. But I, I don't know. But I, I, There are going to be some steals down the board, I think. It just depends it's going to be the saving grace. Going. It's going to be the saving grace of this class. It's like an it's oasis corners. after watching yeah. like all the other positions. I think like man, I don't know if any of these guys get first round grades, and then you watch the corners, and it's like <laughs> all of them are pretty good. Like yeah. I, that's, I mean, that's even like my Carrington experience. Valentine. Like where is he going to go? Uh, and he could end up being you know a solid contributor in the nickel too uh, at out of Kentucky. There's a pretty um, good guy whose name is escaping me right now because it's not an the easiest name to pronounce out of Western Kentucky, I believe who is also good. And I'm not going to elaborate any further, <laughs> but there's a man who plays in Western Kentucky that put good things on film. And I think that's my last thing of the episode. Watch out for a man from, I don't know watch I know. out for a man from Western Kentucky, perhaps playing good cornerback uh, reps, but yes. Oh, well, if you guys don't have anything else, I think we can skedaddle on out of here, wrap things up. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Bangle, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. And as always, from Corn Boy, Bird Boy, and Lemon Boy, we'll catch you all on the flippity flop.